Well, welcome to another episode of uh, Plug and Pay. Great to have uh, have you all with us today. I'm Mark Oliver Feather. I'm the CEO and founder of Paysar, and I'm here today with my uh, trusty sidekick and partner in crime, Max van der Klis Busink, aka the Master Jedi of Global Payroll. Max, how's <laughs> it going? Is Mark, but happy to be back and. Well, I, I, I'm happy to be parted by two legends who are actually Jedi. You call me a Jedi, but they do it every single day. So look at look at Kiros. He even has the moves. But but I'll, I'll get it back to you, Mark. I'll hand it back to you. Thanks everyone for joining. Got a big 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 Jedi crew, yeah. And listen, it's a, it's. I think we have a big show today. Um, you've already alluded to it. Uh, a big big cast of guests um, on the show, which we'll talk about in a second. Also, big topic. Um, so we'll be talking today about technology and payroll and things that I know Max and I like to talk about all day long anyways. Um, and I think it will be fun and exciting to talk about what's what has been happening uh, in the payroll space with lots of technology and innovation and what uh, we think will be happening and what that all means for us working in payroll and uh, uh, how that impacts the roles and responsibilities of uh, of uh, payroll professionals. So let's talk briefly about who we actually have here on the on the uh, on the podcast today. So we have two, as um, Max already said, legendary guests uh, with us. Um, super excited to have Kira Rubiano. Uh, Kira is vice president of Global Payroll uh, Operations at Atlas. We also have Sharon Tayfield with us, Director of Global Payroll Services at BDO. Um, and then you have myself and, and, and Max. Um, so it's great to have this group here. Um, and uh, as I said, what we'll be talking about today is, um, you know, global payroll and, uh, and and technology. And I think, you know, I've been, I think all four of us have, have, have been working in uh, global payroll for quite a while um quite a few years i've been personally working in payroll for the last 10 15 years um and i think uh, it's fair to say that technology over that period of time certainly has evolved and has has come a long way um if we you know take a look at just some of the things that that we've seen happening um you know since the since the uh, early 2000s, I think we've seen um, you know computer software shift from on-premise solutions more and more into into the cloud. Um, so that was one of the one, one of the big technology transitions is, uh, that's been taking place. Then more and more push from not just cloud but um, more more mobile solutions. So that started to uh, become a big thing and continues to be a big thing. Uh, Integrations, right, um, with the rise of big global payroll, uh, global HR solutions, um, global finance systems, uh, that uh, brings the question about how does payroll uh, interface and uh, integrate with these different uh, systems that are merging um, around around payroll. So uh, integration has been a big topic. Leading also into self-service, how can we create more self-service experience all the way up to today, where of course the big topic um, topic in town is uh, AI and um, machine learning and are machines gonna replace all of us, um, not just in payroll, but in general, I suppose as well. So I think lots of lots of trends, lots of things that have, take, have been taking place um, and they're not, as sequential as maybe the slide suggests. So it's not like one starts and the other one ends. Um, a lot of these are continue to run in parallel and are kind of reinforcing each other and building on each other. Um, but I think um, it's it's fair to state that for many organizations, there's been already a lot of transformation happening over the last, um, over the last couple of decades. And I think it brings us to an important and interesting conversation today in terms of where do we find ourselves with all this technology transformation that's been taking place? Um, and to also think about a little bit, where's the journey going? What, what, what do we expect to happen next? And how's that going to impact all of us working in um, the global payroll space? So I know Max, I think we have a few kind of introductory questions teed up to get the conversation started. 
Um, and maybe I'll just pitch it over to you to get us going into that direction. Yes, thanks, Mark. And that was a trip down memory lane with all the different types of developments. I know the point where I came in, where we first had our integrated system between timesheets and payroll and ERP. At the time, it was an international secondment agency. I started on the 7th of June, 2006. That's when my payroll career started. And I think a year later, we had one integrated system where we sent out people all over the world to work on dredging vessels, oil and gas, uh, merchant uh, ships, whatever we did. And it was kind of daily rate driven, but also the pay was driven by the timesheets. And we used to get physical timesheets, sometimes once every six weeks, because they were gone for six weeks. And you just got a timesheet when they got back and they wanted to get paid as soon as possible. So when we introduced kind of timesheets and there was one computer on the vessel, always one computer, with separate logos, and then they could actually type in the timesheets, which flowed directly into the financials and into payroll uh, to the day and age where we are today. But hey, that's just my little background. So we posed three questions to get ourselves going. Of course, this will be related to AI, ML, and any other words that people have found a nice acronym for, and it might or might not uh, influence how we do payroll today. So first of all, maybe it's good, Sharon, my dear, dear Sharon, to ask you a question. We all work in payroll, and in the end of the day, we pay people. But who needs to get paid, Sharon, within global payroll? Well, Max, interesting question. <laughs> um, and of, from my side, obviously, there's a lot of stakeholders that need to get paid. Um, your most important stakeholder is your employees. I mean, the name says it, global payroll pays employees. Um, right. a critical job because without employees getting paid, obviously organizations can't run. But I think equally, we often overlook some of the statutory payments that we make, which are absolutely crucial. Governments need the funding more now than ever before. Um, and I think that is putting a whole different emphasis on the global payroll professional. And then you've got all the other payments that need to be made, obviously, in terms of your deductions, your your pensions, your uh, you know, med your benefits, etc. So there's a whole range um, of stakeholders that need to get paid in this process, in this this monthly sort of non uh, non uh, forgiving process. Because if you're late, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, the world ends. But <sighs> everybody forgets to tell you thank you when it goes well. Um, so, yes, there's a lot of people involved. Great. Thank you. Kira, what are your thoughts on the matter? Well, 100% I agree with Sharon. <laughs> uh, but I, I think, you know, it's our job as, as payroll professionals, and I've been working in payroll since the day I got out of college over 16 years ago. Mind you, most of us never thought we would be in payroll. Um, I wanted to work for the United <laughs> Nations, but here I am keeping world peace by getting the world paid. So I see it as a very <laughs> complimentary job. Um, and if I didn't get them paid, we would have, as mm. Max said before, probably anarchy, apocalypse, who, who knows? So absolutely everybody to keep the world running, the world needs to get paid. And it's not just people, it's all of the governments that depend on funding, it's pensions that guarantee the future, you know, stability of our retired yeah. workforce, it's the garnishments, it's the benefits, it's um, any third party that is involved in ensuring that the world functions, right? But I think as payroll professionals, we have to elevate what payroll is. And, and that's a discussion I have every single day. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of times payroll is seen as a um, like automated function within a business. You push a button and somehow something miraculously happens and then everything is done and there's a pay slip and that's it, right? That's how but it goes for me, Kira, but you have a different experience, I think. <laughs> I think so, but let's talk about it. So uh, <laughs> that's why we're here, right? It's to elevate payroll. It's, yeah. it's to say that it isn't just pressing a button, right? It isn't just a calculation. Payroll is not a calculation. Payroll is um, ensuring it's a it's a livelihood mechanism, right? Mm -hmm. 
it's ensuring that yes, you get paid for the work that you do and that you also pay the liabilities that you owe and your employer does the same, right? In holistically. But if you break it down into its compartments, it's as Sharon mentioned, it's not just the employee net pay, it's making sure the taxes are correct and that you're compliant, making sure that you're managing all of the additional third party components, mm -hmm. making sure that you're you're staying up to date with regulations, making sure that um, you're abiding by the rules you know, set in that country, that you're dealing with humans at the end of the day, because it is an emotional business. I deal with people every single day, whether it is they have questions, whether they have needs, whether they have concerns. Um, there's a human component that we cannot remove from payroll. Um, we can add chatbots one day, <laughs> but I don't know, like I get frustrated with those things. I don't know about you, but when you call like an automated like, you know, system, and you're just start yelling, you're like, I said, yes, <laughs> you know, I said, no, <laughs> like, at some point, you're just like, give me to somebody, I always skip, and I just hit press zero when you want to talk to somebody, right, so I mm -hmm. think when we break down payroll into different components, um, we start to realize it's way more complex than I think a lot of people realize, yeah. and so conversations like this, help elevate payroll and help build understanding and education as to what it truly means, how complex it is and how people are making it run, right? It's it's all of our teams, it's all of our, um, it's every team within any organization, um, it's the vendors, it's the tech providers, um, the, the, they're keeping it running. So even if you create the most robust tech, you still need people to develop the tech, manage the tech, right? Support it, make sure it's working properly, test it, um, get the information to make sure it works correctly from somebody. Guess who that somebody is? Mm -hmm. professionals. So um, I'll, I'll kind of stop right there because I could just keep going down the major rabbit hole, but we'll keep the conversation yeah. running. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, one of the things, Kira, that you've, you've highlighted and I think is, is worth mentioning is that I don't think payroll professionals need to be scared of AI. Um, I don't think we are going to be replaced. You know, you I alluded agree. to so many different things. Um, and I think one of the complexities, especially within global payroll, is all the legislation. So even if you do use the machine language, even if you do do all of that, you just have to look at the vast change that happens in global payroll and the volume of legislation changes. And even if you have automation, somebody, to your point, somebody's still going to go and process that and interpret it correctly and ensure that your automated process has been updated for that. So it's a constant churn. Um, so I don't think it is something that, you know, is just going to be right by global payroll professionals mm. no longer have a role. I think uh, when you've introduced, of course, people will need to get paid, right? Uh, so I always find it kind of interesting that people have a fear of new technology because as Mark said, there's been RPA, everything's yeah. been evolved. We all still have a job. Yeah. <laughs> so AI will be introduced. I guess the job yeah. will change. But if nobody needs to get paid, then payroll won't have a job. But if nobody gets paid, then the government won't claim any revenues. Yeah. Now, 60% typically of the revenues, or you could call it revenues, quote unquote, of a government is collected through payroll, right? Payroll taxes, uh, social security, who then fund and please. So if there's no, but it needs to get paid, there will be no funding. So there will always be jobs for people, but those jobs will likely change and differ. Or change. Evolve. Mm -hmm. Evolve. Right? Yeah. It's yes. and AI is evolving the payroll professional. It's not diminishing the payroll professional, right? It's it's working smarter, not harder. It's like my favorite quote right now because I'm a huge proponent of AI at the moment. <laughs> so um I, I look at it as work smarter, not harder. And that, you know, Kira, you already yeah. alluded to the fact that you know payroll is so multidimensional, right? It's not mm. just as some people might think, oh, just the calculation, get it right, um, make the payment, and then and then you're done, right? There's a lot more um, to it, and and one of the things that um, one of the things you also touched on is 
communication is a big aspect of it, right? Um, communicate communication amongst people that are actually need to coordinate and need to exchange information, interpret information properly. Um, you know, more on the on the uh, administration and you know the professional service side, but also communication with the recipients of of the payroll uh, with the employees is a is a big dimension. And I'm curious. You, you all have run payrolls. Um, I'm curious in your experience how much, if you compare kind of between the more um, you know executional calculatory aspects of the payroll versus the communication and all the the human interaction, right? Um, any any sense, any suggestion in terms of how much is the the actual kind of getting the numbers, processing, crunching the data versus the communication part? I can comment a little bit on that, yeah. and then maybe Sharon, I can give it over to you. Yeah. So it, it, it's it's hard to quantify, right? Because there's different types of communication. There is communication like notifying on a larger level, let's say, of things that are happening going on, if there's issues that arise, right? There's communication that stems from that. Then there's individual one-to-one -one communication around like if someone has a question, concern, problem, or there's communication with authorities, right? Um, something's come up, you need to answer a notice, or there's an audit, so you need mm -hmm. to be communicating on that, or you need to get something set up. So there's all sorts of different types of communication. What I can tell you is it happens on a daily basis, 100%. I can tell you that probably it could range anywhere from one hour to, I don't know, like half a day. You also have internal stakeholder communication, right? So somebody wants to hire, they need to know from payroll, like, by when do we need to like get this person on? What's needed? Like, do we need to register? So you're communicating basically effectively to make sure that everything happens the way that it should. Um, so I'll let Sharon kind of add to that or comment on that. But that that when I look at communication, it's just so much more than right. just like talking to an employee because they have a payslip question, let's yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. I'd say, you know, Mark, to your point of how much is that big button numbers coming out is very small, in my opinion. I think it's very, very small. I think, you know, what Kira has been saying is 100% correct. There's so many other aspects of the communication process that is around it, but the actual number crunching is very small. Um, you know, Kira briefly touched on audits. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Governments want money. Uh, and one of the quickest ways to get money is to audit and uh, audit a company because that brings in extra revenue. Because invariably they're going to find something that isn't quite right, or that you didn't, you know, you didn't dot the I or cross the T. And so there's going to be funds, or there's going to be something. But it's also gathering all that information. And I think that's where an automated process assists because if you're doing everything manually. And I know it's scary, but even in this day and age, there are some companies that are doing multiple things via spreadsheets or, you know, they don't have a seamless end-to-end -end process. It is more difficult to get the communication out first time correct. And so what you're looking for is you're looking for that automation that is going to assist you, is going to support the global payroll professional to ensure that they're able to get results out very quickly that are accurate, obviously, but then also able to do the communication. So when you get that audit, you're able to get the information that you need quickly and you're able to respond quickly. And I think that's where there'll be improvement um, in it. But it's very, I would say that the actual process of calculating the payroll is very small. And I think if you look at the end-to-end -end calendar life cycle, and Kira, you probably see this now as well, being back in the front end of processing <laughs> payroll, <laughs> the actual um days that you spend on that is small in comparison to everything else yeah it's very small uh, you know it's all the things that you that get added on that you need to consider uh, and those are the things that I think you know we need to embrace and see where we can help 
reduce that cycle. Because if we only, you know, to your point, Mark, if, if, if it's a very small percentage, so, you know, let's say it's 25%, less than 25%, what well, we should be doing is saying, how are we going to save time on the rest of the 75%? Mm -hmm. That's the communication that we're doing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so audit was already one of the areas you said there yeah. could be some, you know, um, help from technology and creating efficiencies by having everything, you know, digitally organized and, and, and so on. Um, so as we think about other dimensions of, of, of payroll responsibilities, what, what what would be some of the other areas Kira already has her hand? I have I just got to say that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally my focus every day right now. Uh, so I'm going to give a couple of good examples of how AI has uh, driven efficiency uh, recently. Something simple as even translation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, my job is to ensure payroll uh, in, act, you know, 120 plus countries um, every single day, right? Every single cycle, I need to ensure that people around the world in 120 countries um, get paid. Now, um, I have a great, amazing team, but they don't all speak every language in every single country. And they get, we get notices, documents, you know, things that need uh, an assessment or review. AI has drastically enabled us to be able to look at that information more quickly and efficiently um, by reading the text, right? Whereas, you know, previously you would go into Google Translate, it'd have a character limit, you'd have to like chop things up, then it would, then you like forgot where you left off. Um, it's incredible what AI can do, even by like looking at text, right? Um, and, and knowing right away if it's in a PDF or any type of document. Mm -hmm. So something simple as just supporting translation, or if you're communicating with an employee in another country who might not speak English, taking that communication and translating on it. I have tested, because I speak several languages, I have tested myself, um, and it's mm -hmm. quite powerful and good with the way it translates. It might not be perfect in terms of like colloquial kind of conversational talk, but it does a really great job. So Sharon, it looks like. No, 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 I'm oh, agreeing with you. I'm not <laughs> agreeing with you, go Kira. <laughs> yes, yes. So just a simple thing is helping and supporting with translation. Um, the other is build, helping build general foundational knowledge. Now, obviously, and I would like to put a disclaimer that anything you find through an AI tool that exists out there should be not taken as legal, advice uh, or official government advice or tax no advice. Tits, yeah. okay? no major disclaimer, no major, <laughs> like this does not constitute legal advice. However, if let's say you are a payroll professional and you're asked to get an understanding of what is like the tax system like, or um, what can I expect in Denmark? you can type that into an AI tool and it'll give you some good general foundational information to um, be able to get an understanding of different, you know, tax structures or what are the labor law requirements, or it can direct you to the government websites, for example, that host that information. So it's really enabled myself and my team to kind of have a I would say an additional support tool that can help bring more education um, for mm -hmm. them, right? But once again, it, it doesn't replace expertise. It helps give you an idea or some foundational knowledge. And from a more technical standpoint, and I think all of you can agree to this, one of the biggest challenges when you're working around the world is the pay slips are different, right? Every country has different um, formats, they have different requirements as to what the payslip looks like, different languages, and you have to get those payslips to your employees. And even if you work, whether you have a global system or not a global system, getting those payslips to each employee is actually a really hard task. Mm. Um, and what AI has recently in the past few years done is it, it's allowed um, tools to learn payslips and be like, okay, this is this person's payslip. I know it because 
here's where the idea is, here's the name, here's where it ends, I'm going to send it off and, you know, append it to the employee profile, and I'm comfortable and secure knowing that it did it correctly, right? So tools, um, AI has enabled way more efficiency in how we can distribute pay slips, let's say within an organization um, without looking at every pay slip and going, okay, whew, this is employee ID, this, 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 I'm going to upload it one by one to this mm -hmm. individual. So there's so many different ways and there's much more, which um, we can talk about later, but these are just little ways that help drive efficiency mm -hmm. and that allow us to work smarter. Um, uh, in our everyday-to-day job. Sharon, you also had your hand up. Oh. Yeah, no, I was, well, I was applauding to Kira, but I was also going to say, you know, one of the things, Kira, to your point is, you know, new starter process. Um, if you've got a large volume of new starters every single month in a specific country and your employees are filling in a form, whether that form is a, a PDF document or it's, still a manual document, there, there is AI that can support reading that as long as the form is standard. And that obviously it improves the time to process it. I mean, if you have self-service, that's even better, but it does support you where you don't necessarily have that self-service mm -hmm. um, and you are still relying on forms that are completed. So there is a lot of AI that can reduce the the end-to-end -end processing time and assist the global payroll professional to make sure that they are doing things accurately. This I 100% really agree with, sorry, I was going to say, I 100% agree with Kira on the pay slips as well, because a number of the in-country service teams, the um, output that comes from them, the pay slips are not split per employee. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you laughing, Max, because that's the number one thing. You send the wrong no. pay slip to the wrong person. I'm yes. sure we can all relate. And so that's where AI assists, because if you can get a tool that can split the pay slips, to your point, Kira, that it knows exactly where the pay slip ends and it creates a separate PDF document or whatever, you, whatever output that you are creating per person, it reduces... Um, that risk of having the wrong pay slip sent to the wrong person. Because in the old days, it used to be done manually. You used to take the file and somebody used to sit and rename it. That, you know, that's where AI has really helped um, improve our efficiency. We used to mail it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> oh, I remember. <laughs> yes, correct. And it's always <laughs> like that, where, that when I hear you speak about AI and, and, and other tools, it's it's another way of automating parts of the payroll process mm -hmm. and upping the quality. So it's all about just efficiency, effectiveness, and quality of, of the payroll results, which I think if you would sum up all the promises of all technology on the time savings, we would be minus 1,000% and <laughs> all being on a beach somewhere drinking some nice cocktail, right? Uh, but but let's assume that all the tools actually deliver on the promise and you do get time back. What would the payroll professionals within your teams then do with that time that they currently do not have time for? I think, go Kira. No, you said Kira. Please do. I think one of the things is there is a lot of other extra added value that can be added. So you can look at, you know, we we all talk about it. We all dream of analyzing the payroll and providing further information to either your clients or if you're working in-house um, to your leadership. Payroll has so much information in it. And I think at the moment, if you're not using AI to its full extent, your month is completely mm. occupied with just getting the payroll processed. And so you don't have time to sit back and look at the data. I mean, you just think about it. You could through the data that you've got on the payroll with regards to sick leave, you could work out trends for the organization. <sighs> you could tell them, you know, I can see a trend emerging here that every winter uh, we've got a reduction in head for in staff um, because of illness or whatever it is, but th that data could be used. Now I know you could also use AI in that process. 
Um, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, it's all the things that you could do with that. Use the AI, get the data, but then obviously feed it in. And, and what are you going to do with that data? Take it a step further. Kira, I think, I think, yeah. I, I was going to say, the way I look at it, AI is um, this job is very stressful. <laughs> it's a very stressful No kidding. <laughs> okay. um, there's a high burnout rate in HR and payroll. And the reason for that is, is there's no margin for error, right? Yes. Um, and there's no, you can't just like, oh, this month I'm going to be late with paying taxes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, I'm operating with a lean staff or uh, we'll just, you know, miss the deadline for paying, you know, all of Ireland or something like that. Um, and, and because it is so deadline driven and such an emotional industry, mm -hmm. It is a very stressful industry. And the way I look at AI is it has to relieve some of the stress for us because um, the more stress it relieves from, from payroll professionals, the more we can get payroll professionals into the industry and keep them in the industry. That's number one. Um, and the more that we can also increase accuracy, right? Accuracy and really having information available and accessible. Um, so I look at it as a way to help reduce all, like that pressure that oh, payroll yeah. constantly feels, like constantly feels to make sure everything's done 100% right, 100% on time, 100% compliant, like keep everybody happy, you must do it, right? And if we can have ways to alleviate some of that, I think we'll have um, a happier profession, right, in, in general, um, because I think it is gotten a bad rap a little bit. Um, and we, we need to look at it differently. We, we do. And, and how do we make life easier for the practitioners? That's, That's a really interesting perspective because always you hear like you can give time back, reduce manual work so you could work and focus on strategic stuff. Not everybody wants to focus on strategic initiatives, right? If you, I, I once managed a guy a few times actually, he was a great guy who always said, Max, you provide me with the structure. I want to do my job. I'm a processor. I'm a coordinator. That's what I want to do. I never want to grow into a managerial role. So if I would have told them, we're now going to implement AI, we'll reduce 40% of your manual work so you can work on strategic uh, cost trends, he would be very unhappy. He would be happy by me saying, hey, you don't need to work 70 hours <laughs> in a two-week period per month yeah. to get payroll out the door. No, you don't have to wake up in the middle of the night if you did that additional check that you actually agreed with yourself that you would do because you can rely on the payroll results and actually do your job within 40 hours. I think that's the message you're advocating, Kira. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Because let me tell you, in my entire career, I don't think I've had a 40-hour work week. <laughs> no. So, um, yeah, I, I haven't. But obviously, I'm in a leadership role that's a different question but i i i want my team to be able to take time off and not mm -hmm. feel bad about it i want them to log off at the end of the day and not panic that they forgot you know that one check or that one thing or they they didn't you know write something uh appropriate not appropriately but like in the right format or something mm -hmm. like that so um, alleviating some of that stress and pressure and kind of building their confidence, I think will go a long way. So I see AI enabling that and, and bringing us back to a 40 hour work week, <laughs> maybe less if the things happen and change, but, wow. but it's, it's, it's something to think about, right? That's how I look at it. That's why I'm mm -hmm. a huge proponent of it right now within our organization. And we're, we're working on um, rolling out something that is AI at its core um, that will help us. And I hope my number one goal is to make life easier for my team in the sense of alleviate some of that stress and pressure so that they can now focus on value added mm -hmm. um, fun, you know, uh, tasks being more attentive to employees, more attentive to customers, really spending time, um, you know, addressing the concerns with more, with more time. Because we need time. What we don't have is time. <laughs> That's what we don't have. And we can't buy it. We can't find it. We don't have it. So maybe AI gives us that time. 
So, so I, 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 I totally agree with that and um, can relate to that. Um, you know, freeing up, freeing up time for for people that are, you know, overworked and um, and doing too many things, late hours, manually, you know, trying to trying to save the day because something input has come in late and now they need to figure out how to make it, you know, get it to work. Um, and I think, you know, what we're discussing here, um, relieving, relieving the, uh, the, the payroll professionals, um, through AI will resonate with people that are doing that exact role. I'm curious though, how you think about that dynamic from the perspective of the senior executives that sit on top of, you know, three, degrees removed from what's happening on the ground might not be seeing all the you know heroic efforts that go into making sure that everyone gets paid every month um they hear the word ai and they think oh great automation efficiency time savings equals cost savings let's rationalize um how do we explain to them what is realistic and what's not realistic what the impact actually is um because if they here, well, you know, now um, Max here, who's processing, processing our payroll, is going to have just more time, right, for himself. They can go, <sighs> perfect. For Max, right, but what's in it for me, um, you know, Mr. CFO or Mrs. CFO, you know, what, what am I? Usually, also, obviously, you know, doing a project like that comes with cost. If you say, well, maybe we're not going to bring in, you know, smart technology and, and um AI. So how do we how do we think about that from kind of not just the level of people in the function in the role, but people that ultimately hold the purse strings to make these things happen? Any thoughts on that? Um, well, I have that conversation um, often <laughs> because it is a conversation uh, that you know we have. There's not an easy answer, Mark, to that. I think it's yet. We, we have yet to know what, how much time is truly freed up. We don't know that. We can't quantify it yet because it's still very much in progress or it's um, happening. But the way I look at it is I have to elevate the profession um, and my team and make sure that I then, if they do have underutilized time, that I'm utilizing them in the appropriate way that brings value to the organization, right? Um, the last thing I would ever want, um, and and uh, I think every leader doesn't want, is to have to reduce their team, right? Um, and I don't think we would get to that because as we opened up with, there's so much that a payroll professional does that is not AI-able. I don't know if that's a <laughs> term that we can coin. Yeah. Um, but it, it's really about having a champion in your organization that can speak to leadership and truly say, look, yes, AI is bringing efficiency. Yes, AI is making life a little bit easier. But ultimately, it's also increasing our employee happiness index. It's reducing employee turnover, which is a huge problem today, by the way. Um, I'm sure every leader in an organization can attest how painful recruitment can be. Um, and how difficult it is, especially with newer generations coming into the workforce, retaining workforce. Um, and so if it helps um, create an opportunity for, for learning, um, for talent, for a happier employee who gets paid more accurately and on time and has a better experience, that's great. Um, if it creates more stability within the HR payroll function so that you don't have um, these like continuity gaps or risks. If you can bring in higher people on quicker, it keeps your stakeholders happier because they, they got that talent, right, um, globally. So there's ways that you can position AI to say, look, it's actually um, really gonna improve our experience and our our company as a whole, because we're going to be able to do all these things and keep employees happy. I mean, it doesn't solve all of the problems that businesses have, um, but it, it can add to that happiness index, especially within internal functions like HR and payroll, um, and what they then 
ultimately project on to the employees that they take care of and customers, of course, if you're a service provider. I buy that. That sounds sounds like a good uh, good rationale. Sharon, you, you were you going to add something to that? No, I was going to agree with Kira, and, uh, and I think a lot of um, clients are speaking about an employee experience. And I think AI gives a better employee experience because of the accuracy rate that Kira referred to. You know, if you've got our AI in place, the chances are you will have more accurate payroll coming out. Um, and if you have less stressed global payroll professionals, the accuracy rate will also um, improve. You know, the, the whole experience will be a better one if people are in a, in a better mindset themselves. Um, and they feel happy about the role. 100% to support what Kira says that at the moment, um, staff turnover within global payroll professional field is very high. Um, mm. And getting new talent to come in and embrace and become uh, champions of it is really difficult. Yeah. Extremely difficult. Maybe the Maybe the payroll professionals has been too um too accepting right of these kind of um they uh being overworked right constantly being overworked mm -hmm. so it's kind of become accepted or expected almost right and yeah. maybe it's time to push back and say listen it's just not sustainable we got to have better tools we got to have better technology we got to you know put better um support infrastructures in place yeah um, Especially if you want to scale as a company, yeah. right? Like you want to grow, you want to expand all over the world. Right. It's, it's you, you don't mm. forget about payroll because you have to mm. have that in place, right? So yeah. it's an enabler too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Max, what else do we have? Well, I was just thinking of the, the whole employee experience and uh, I worked, of course, also in global payroll roles and I reported into finance or HR. When I reported into finance or accounting, I never heard anything about an employee experience. <laughs> when I worked in HR, the only thing I heard about was the employee experience. So I think if you would ask the CEO, they would probably have a different answer. But if you would ask a CFO, Yes, of course, they can't say out loud. They will never say that the employee experience is not top of mind because everybody you know, is, is on the same page. The employee experience is, is great. But if they, if they would look at their own domain, right, then maybe we need to articulate differently what AI would do for him. Maybe it would be zero financial misstatements, right? Uh, instant financial close, uh, always accurate payrolls, no risk of audit findings, no risk of non-compliance. Maybe that's the promise to say, well, yes, we need this set of budget and we still need humans within payroll because, hey, at the end of the day, think about COVID and COVID was over, although it's on the rise at some points, but everybody wanted to interact again because after all, we're humans and people yeah. need people, right? We could have all the chatbots that we need, Kira. I had one with an airfare. I sent them a, a chatbot, but the chatbot was too busy. <laughs> so I said, I'll come back to you in four hours. I said, freaking, you're a chatbot. How the chatbot was overworked. The chatbot. <laughs> so people will still need uh, uh, people. And if you would look at the age, of course, yes, it's the employee experience and, and the employee attrition. You could you know, develop tools to articulate uh, the cost of attrition, the cost of recruitment, but that's a little bit more difficult and maybe far stretched. Mm -hmm. But we still want to uh, get sufficient people and funding within payroll to fund that people part, but also the AI piece. So what I'm hearing is that, and this was actually part of a, a webinar from one of our competitors, a light that they did with Payo yesterday, where they said AI will be a coworker, but they will not replace uh, the payroll professions itself, which made me think of the DNA of a payroll professional, because sometimes we also just like checking. So if we would implement AI, would we really not want to just look at the data ourselves Really not just run an additional report or just have a sneak peek at the pay slip. You know, you're managing teams around the world. You know the DNA of a payroll professional. And we see the DNA of a payroll professional when we look into the mirror. 
uh, or when I start speaking to my family, I'm even a payroll professional. So do you think the payroll DNA is ready for such a revolutionary change of AI? I think the DNA is evolving, right? I think you have several different types of payroll professionals that are in the industry today. You have the ones that have been here for a while, right? That are slowly phasing out, right? They, they started on the physical timesheets and the paychecks and the, you know, kind of, you know, typing everything in. Then you have, the group that kind of got a, a little bit of the manual experience, but then started to like work with tech and got kind of excited by it and wants to know what's next. And then you have the generation that's maybe newly started or possibly coming in that all they know is tech, right? All they know is that I can get things instantly, that I can look it up, that I can find it wherever it is. And that generation is going to have different needs. And so I think you have to kind of separate it into the payroll generations to say what's going to be, what are they going to be comfortable with for? What are they going to be yearning for? And what is going to be their natural inclination to want to do? Like, um, I think a certain generation will always be skeptical and will always trust their own two eyes more so than anything. A certain generation will just fully. Um, kind of accept it, embrace it, uh, and, and work with it. So we have a lot of different folks right now active in the payroll industry, um, and their experience is different, right? And they've also, I think, haven't seen the pitfalls necessarily of what can go wrong in payroll. I think you need to see, like, what can go wrong <laughs> to truly understand. Wrong, like, yeah how hard it is to fix it <laughs> and, and how complex it is. So I think those that have seen a lot go wrong will always be a little kind of skeptical, maybe double checking, but it doesn't mean they can't learn to trust mm. it, right? I don't know that makes some, sense, but that's yeah. how I kind of compartmentalize it. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say, I, I have an interesting thing on that because I don't know if it's so much as being skeptical I think that even with AI, you still need to have that extra look over it. Because at the end of the day, if the information coming in is not correct, the information coming out will not be correct. Right. And what you don't want is you don't want to get to a situation where because it came out of a machine, people accept that it is 100% accurate. Um, I have uh, one of, it's the worst mistake ever um and i do recount it often i'm not going to uh, obviously give away the name the, the name of the client that it involved but fair to say um we got information in that needed to be converted from local currency into mm. um another currency uh, and there was a process but it went wrong something mm -hmm. went wrong it wasn't it was not a manual totally manual process it was semi-automated but something went wrong and it got fed back in and processed and because it had come out of the payroll system nobody questioned it ah. came out of the system it's been automated it's been checked we've got a process in place and it wasn't picked up but it was such a big mistake that the person's bank account got frozen oh uh -huh. Such a big mistake. And you're right, Kira, that was a huge learning curve for everybody to go, yes, you can have AI in place. Yes, you can have automation, but you still need to look at something and go, does this really look correct? And I think that, again, coming back to why you will always need payroll professionals, because I think we seasoned. I mean, we've got that skepticism that looks at something mm -hmm. and goes, this doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's that ability. But I don't think it's you know, necessarily manually recalculating everything or checking everything back. But I think it's that skepticism. You look at it's something. It's a about, balance. It's a balance. It's finding yeah. the right balance to, once mm. again, allowing AI and technology to make things more efficient, but not necessarily take away your judgment and your mm. approval, right? We have to review and approve. That's mm. part of our job. Yeah. yeah um, but you meant, go ahead, Max. 
Yeah, as, I was just thinking as part of AI, right? There's this, uh, we, we don't know the ins and outs of the algorithms behind it, right? There's no real transparency around it. Therefore, can we really trust the outcome or do we still need to review it? Is there maybe any bias in the algorithm? You know, you never know what can happen. I still remember that example. I think it was in Twitter at the time where they had a bot who started off very nicely, but ended up only swearing on Twitter because that's what the algorithm taught himself through searching all the Twitter feeds, because then they said, well, this is appropriate communication on Twitter. So then the bot turned it out to be a very nasty one. And actually, I think Twitter even blocked their own bot because of policy violations. Um, of course, that won't happen in payroll. But once you let loose these algorithms and AIs within actual payroll results, to your example, right, where an employee bank account, we need to fully trust those um, algorithms and, and payroll results. You've reviewed hundreds of pay slips, millions of pay slips. I always say, when I look at a pay slip, regardless of which country, you know something's wrong or not, but you can't say what's wrong, but you look at it. <laughs> and you go, it's wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. And now I'm going to find what, but something's wrong. Yeah. Right. So, so are we are we going to get bots at the end of the day that are going to somehow get smarter than us, siphon off money from the payroll, put it into their own bank accounts, go on to <laughs> lavish vacations that uh, no one figures out how they've done it? Is that so, is that is that the risk max that we're looking at? So this, uh, I'm not sure if you've seen the movie I Robot with Will Smith, but there is also a big AI machine. She calls herself Vicky. And in the end of the day, when she's destroyed by Will Smith and his friendly bot, she says, Vicky, this AI machine, my logic is undeniable. <laughs> Yet she was destructed by a human with a friendly mm. bot. So my, hopefully, my answer to your question will still hold truth in years to come would be no. But now maybe she, she, Sharon and Kira have a different view on it. I mean, I think that's the lure of science fiction. <laughs> I mean, how many movies have you seen where, you know, yeah, humans are not on Earth and they're living on some, um, you know, ship, spaceship out by Jupiter and there's 10 million galaxies and creatures, won't, right? Um, I think it's hard to predict what the future will look like because there's been so much evolution in technology just over the past 10 years, 20, 30. I mean, if you look at just the evolution of a phone and how we love it, you know, work with it today, how our kids go to school. Like I, I was saying, I used to go and look up newspaper articles with microfiche. I don't know if anyone remembers that where you stick it into this like projector Wait. thing and you have to like- it's, Library, yes. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, now I, I tell my kids all the time, I'm like, you just have to type it into Google and it'll give you like the full record, right? And that happened, I mean, that, that didn't take that much time. Now, has it, it has it changed the experience? A hundred percent. But it's, it's the way the world is. It's the world evolves and we have to make a decision. Do we evolve with it or do we fight it, right? Uh, if we have fought all the changes that have happened over the past decades, um, we would we would be in a very different place. And so I think we have to embrace it. I think we can't be afraid of it because we don't know what it's going to mm. mean 10, 20 years from now. But you have a decision. You can either pick up that phone and Google it, or you can go to the library, find that microfiche and stick it into the thing. And then you make the decision how you want to look up the data, right? It's up to you, but we make those decisions every single day. So, um, and we make those decisions with how we live our lives. And this is just another thing that we can embrace, decide to use it, or we can decide not to embrace it, but it's up to us eventually how we choose to work with it or not. It makes me think back of a TV show I watched maybe months ago, but uh, it it had a quote in there that somebody was interviewed, I think it was 1989 or something, where they were sharing predictions of the future. One of them was, can you ever imagine that people on the street will walk with a phone in their hands? Everybody, no one excluded, said, you're crazy. Some even said, you know, go, go trash someone else. What are you with your stupid questions, right? 
And then look at us now, we, we're kind of attached to our phone, right? The next thing is you won't have hands anymore. You would just have two phones or something. So the only fear for me is the inability of most humans to, to embrace or predict the future that's beyond your imagination. Mm -hmm. right? We're talking based on our knowledge today and our mm. years of experience that our brain is molded on. So can we really say, to answer your question, Mark, will a bot ever do payroll and maybe put some money into the bot that they're married to? No, I don't, I don't, because it's beyond my imagination. But could it be true? Maybe my son of four years old, Bus, will tell me when I'm in the elderly home, say, I told you so. Yeah. <laughs> it would happen. Well, it'd be interesting to watch for sure how uh, how things will, will evolve. They're changing quickly, right? And I think I think... What we're all saying is you got to walk into all of this with your eyes wide open, right? And sort of be, be accepting of, of the things that are, uh, that are coming and are evolving um, as always, you know, some are for the good and for the better and some are maybe also not for, for, for the better. But um, I think, I think it's a, it's a fascinating time that we're living in. Uh, this conversation here over the last hour, I think alone shows all the, different angles and the potential uh, that's there. Um, hopefully it will bring back more sanity to, to uh, everyone's um, work-life balance and bring back more, uh, you know, time for people to, um, you know, not just be stressed and crunch the numbers and try to get things done last minute, but uh, find more time to be more balanced and, you know, um, spend more time with communicating with their colleagues and um, explaining things, right. Rather than being kind of rushed from, from one, one task to the next. Um, and yeah, I think, I think what I've heard here is that AI will not replace the payroll professionals for sure. There's still so many, so many different dimensions um, that are important that yeah. AI is nowhere near to understand or master um but it can it can have a big impact and uh, you know help help the human professionals so um and hopefully those those bots will not burn out like the bot that you were waiting for for four hours so hopefully they'll be they'll have more stamina than that yeah. and don't get me wrong mark I, I just want to clarify one thing yes the stress is there but this is a very rewarding profession at the end of the day we keep the world running if it wasn't for every hardworking payroll HR professional, the world would not run today anywhere. And so um, that's what gets me up in the morning, <laughs> to, to be honest with you. So I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, no, yeah. I think it's a good good point to end on. Don't get discouraged and think. No. Um, but it's also, it's a very varied role. And I mean, I know, Kira, you and I have often spoken about that, uh, along with Max. It, ha it embraces so many different streams that... Right. It's where else can you do this? I sometimes summarize with payroll, you don't have to choose. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Well, listen, thank you so much for uh, for jumping on here to today. Uh, fantastic conversation. I know we could keep going for hours, but um, mm -hmm. I know we all have other things that we need to take care of as well. Um, so uh, thank you, uh, Kira and Sharon, especially for being on with us tonight or today for those in where the day is still starting and um let's uh, let's keep the conversation going and uh talk about this so thank you so much everyone thank you thank well. you thank, thank you next you. time in person All yes. Right. Yes, absolutely. oh yeah <laughs> cut out the machine middleman let's do it in person all right thank you very much bye um,